Spirit, we need you like never before this morning. We ask, Heavenly Father, that the truth of your word will be filtered into every facet, every aspect, every area of our lives. Come and help us and cause this word to come alive. Let it transform. Let it change. Let it produce a revolution on the inside of us, O oh God. That will leave us, O oh God, never like before. May we become unrecognizable. May our conduct, our character be transformed to that of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' precious and most holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you indeed. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise God. Please take a seat. Yeah. Praise team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we give all the praise to God. Um, you know, um, many times I... I keep on marveling at what God is able to do with those who are available to him. Um, I have discovered over time that God is not really looking for... Mommy, how are you? God bless you. Good morning. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Good morning. Um, that God is not really looking for the gifted and the talented even though when he finds that, he can use. I wrote down something recently, um, which the Holy Spirit said to me, and I put it down, and I would like to probably just share some of that with us this morning. Um, and what is it? The Lord said to me that he does not need nor lack gifted men and women. I already shared this with somebody yesterday. Um, God said, I do not need, I am not seeking, and I'm not lacking gifted men and women. He said to me, what I need and what I lack and what I seek are faithful men and women. I repeat, he says, I'm not seeking, I'm not lacking, I'm not in need of gifted men and women. But rather, what I lack, what I need, what I seek are faithful men and women. For much of the Bible, the Bible, which is the Word of God, and I hope that we absolutely believe that to be the truth, what God has always looked for are faithful people. The Bible says that a faithful man who can find. Gifting is plentiful, but faithfulness is a rare asset. A gift can flash. Fitfulness is a lifetime characteristic. Fitfulness is a product 
of abiding in Christ and as a product of relationship. Gift does not depend on relationship. Faithfulness is always found in the place of relationship. And time is what reveals faithfulness. Gift can be identified in a second. Gift and character are mutually exclusive. You can be gifted without character. You can also have character without gift. In God's ideal place, God desires both gift and character. But if the Lord were to choose, he would always take character and make the deposit of the gift. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6. Many a man proclaims his own loving kindness and goodness, but a faithful man who can find. In the uh, NLT Bible, New Living Translation, or in the Message Bible, it says, Many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable? Do you have the message Bible there? You don't have it. Okay, in Jesus' name, by next week we have it. In fact, but before the end of today's service, we have it. Amen. All you have to do is to, just to purchase it. Hallelujah. But who, who has the message Bible here? You can find it on your mobile phone. Just go on to the um, Google. Yeah. Just go to Google and just add in. Okay. Um, the message. Okay. So faithfulness and reliability are what? One and the same. A faithful person is a reliable person. A reliable person is a dependable person. A, a dependable person is a trustworthy person. Let me ask a question. Why do we have faith in God? Because he is faithful. If God were unfaithful, then we cannot have faith in him. The basis of our faith is built on God's own faithfulness. You don't have faith because you can pray. Okay? You don't have faith because you're a strong man of God. Yeah? Okay? Um, I've done this example before. Okay? All right? Um, Uncle Yomi, can I have this? Can you bring a chair? Just bring a chair over here. Who can remember this example before? Put it, put it here. Praise God. Hallelujah. No, come here so that. Praise God. Okay. No, stand on it. Praise God. Just stand. No, stand. Stand. Praise God. Okay. What is the basis of Yomi's confidence to stand on this chair? Praise God. Okay. Okay. All right. The moment, did I touch him? But why did he fall? Because the chair became unstable, unreliable. Isn't that true? 
So the basis, so that it doesn't matter how strong Yomi is, the moment this thing becomes unstable, all his power is finished. So the basis of your faith, the strength of your faith is not in the strength of you as a person, but in the faithfulness of God whom you trust in. So that no man will have pride in himself. Okay. So the Bible says, thank you, Uncle Yomi. God bless you. Yeah. There's a lot of people claim to be loyal and loving. Let's, let's see. Say, but where on earth can you find one? Okay. Faithfulness is a product of character. Character that is developed through our relationship and with God in Christ Jesus and by the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit within us. So the Bible speaks about the character of God. Okay, Can, can somebody just tell me a place in the Bible where it just outlines multiple elements of the character of God? Who knows where to find it? Anybody know? This is very interesting. Pardon? That's right. The fruit of the Spirit. Galatians. Okay. Galatians is where you find, wherever, I was speaking of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit outlines the character and the nature of God. Okay. Another place where you find an outline of the character and the nature of God outlined richly church first corinthians chapter 13 okay first corinthians 13 those are compact places where the nature and the character of god is revealed okay the bible says that love is what kind love is what all those speak about the nature god is god is where it says love you substitute for God, God, all those are speaking about the attributes of God in Christ, his character. All these are also speaking about God, the nature of God. Okay, the Bible says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in, the, in our lives. Love, joy, peace, that's the nature and the character of God. Are we together? Okay. Now, it's important that we understand these truths. So, God is God desires character out of the lives of men more than gift. Everywhere in scripture, men never failed for lack of gift. They failed for what? Lack of what? Character. The greatest asset that your employer is looking for in you is what? Character. The gift will open the door for you. But it's only character that will keep you in the place that your gift opened for you. Many people, their gift will open a door for them and their character will slam the door back in their face. All the kings of Israel, the history of all the characters in the Bible, all the men and women of God. There's a book I've been reading and it's called All the Men in the Bible. You have the one for all the women of the Bible. Yeah, Every single one of them their successes and their failings were all connected to what? Character. Not to gift. A marriage is built on what? Hello? Character. Not gifting. A marriage is established based on what character not gifting a marriage is destroyed for lack of what character not gifting 
your children your children depend on your what character not your what gifting and that is not to say that giftings are not important they are but on the weight of importance and priority okay character weighs 10 times more if not a hundred times more than gifting and the reason why i'm building this thing is that you see many times you find people a person with character okay many a times they may not be very gifted but because they are faithful they're reliable they're dependable they're consistent their consistency and their faithfulness will cause God to give and add to them what they lacked at the very beginning. So you'll find two people, one full of gifting and the other one has character. They will start off. Everybody knows the one with gifting will immediately shine and be at the front. But as time progresses, the one with gifting will fade out and the one with character will continue and God will take from that and add it to the one who is what who has character so the Bible says in first Samuel chapter 15 okay that the Lord stirred up a young man at the time well I don't know how young he was but let's just say let me just read it here. First Samuel chapter 16, okay? But to, to understand First Samuel 16, you have to read 15, but we don't have time, okay, to read 15, okay? But Saul lost the kingdom for what lack of what character when samuel was asked to go and anoint another person what was the first thing that samuel looked for he looked for gifting let me tell you why because gifting is always in front gift is always visible gift you can see it straight away it is not hidden okay but character takes time and is normally submerged and is normally found in the heart. So Samuel went first and he quickly picked what he could see. Because gift and talent is very visible. And he picked that. And the Lord said to him, no, 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 no. Uh, don't look at the outside. Okay? Look at what is beneath. So by spiritual discernment, which is the direction of the Holy Ghost, God picked David. Bible says, a man after my own what? Heart. Okay. The interesting thing is, David was very gifted, but it wasn't his gifting that God honored above everything else. It was his heart, his integrity of heart, his character that God honored and God saw and worked with. Are we together in this? Yeah. This is important because even in making choices every day of friendships, relationships, especially when it comes to marriage and business partners and so on, it is very easy to quickly go for gifting and for talent. Because it is always worn like a clothing on the outside. Everybody can see it. But as time goes by, why relationships break down? Do people say, oh, he has changed? No, he hasn't changed. The gift has ceased to blind you. Now you can see the character. We learned something when we were doing marriage counseling. Uncle Patrick said to us, love may be blind, but the Holy Spirit can see. Amen. Which, what he was saying also is that when you're in love, you know, they say love, you person will be blind, they won't see anything. But if you are in the Holy Ghost, 
what love blinded you from seeing, the Holy Ghost will cause you to see. The Holy Ghost will cause you to see the end, even from the beginning. Love will only show you the beginning and not the end. Then later he said, you have changed. Why have you changed? No, he didn't change. You have just seen what he really is like. You know, or she's like, both ways. Hallelujah. And, and these are important things for us to see that in the kingdom of God, what God is looking for are men and women with character, integrity of heart, who are reliable, who are dependable, men who are trustworthy. And so the Bible says, I'm actually, let me tell you my passage for today, okay? It is really Acts chapter 6, okay? Last week we dealt with the other two. I'm moving to part B. Of Acts chapter 6. We're moving to verse 3. Now going downwards. Okay. But I'm laying a foundation here. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Everybody open to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Specifically verse 2. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. What does the Bible say here? Moreover. Let's read together. It is what? Essential. Or it is essentially required that what of what stewards that a man should be what found what faithful proving himself worthy of trust let's read together again moreover it is what essentially required of stewards that a man a woman should be what found what faithful that is proving himself worthy of trust proving himself worthy of to be depended upon trust means that somebody can put their weight upon you somebody can lean on you and they know they will not fall somebody can make a deposit with you and know that you will not be lost Somebody can take all the eggs and put in this basket and know that it will not fail. Marriage in itself, I keep on bringing back this issue, is based on the principle of stewardship and trust. Faithfulness. Because to marry somebody, vice versa, you are taking all your eggs and putting in this basket. You are taking your life and putting in somebody else's hands. You are taking your labor, everything you are, and saying, I'm entrusting this with you. Would you be faithful to look after it for me for the rest of my life? And a steward is somebody who is looking after something that does not belong to him. Amen? Alright? Let me ask you a question. What is the first thing that is given to you to look after? Pardon? Your life, your body. A body you have given me to do what? Whose will? God's will. You know, recently, I don't know whether to, it's is, is, is a light matter, but it's a serious matter, okay? Um, you know, we're going to do my dad's funeral, and now what they're saying, or what we are saying, is that the body is in the mortuary. Why is it not he's in the mortuary? The he has what? Thank you. We want to go and now properly put away the container which which the vehicle with which the man traveled the earth while he was here. Because the he is gone. So your body is a trust. That is even given to you. That's why Hebrews chapter 10. Verse, I think it's verse 5 or 6 or so. Yeah. That says a body. You have what? 
given me to do your will not to do my will corinthians chapter 6 tells us that our bodies are the temple of the holy ghost when we become born again hallelujah it is it is a gift that is given to us amen okay that, let's read together it says hence when he christ entered into the world hallelujah amen watch this how did he enter into the world Eternity before. Are we together? Yeah? Okay. Then, watch this. I'm about to enter eternity of time. So when I want to enter eternity of time, this is how it happens. A body you have given me to do your will. Everybody will be clapping. Because the baby has just been born. So this body expands and can be used for anything, for good or for evil. When I finish, I will take off the body again. Amen? I have finished, or it is finished, whichever one. I will leave it there. And now enter the place where there will be an examination. What did you do with the body that I gave you? You will give an account. Then they will take this body and what dispose of it called burial. Let me quickly say something. I know it doesn't happen so much around here, okay? But it's an issue that came up at home. Um, and there was before when we went in, in January, you know, there were discussions about my dad was already saying that, you know, guys, if anything happens, blah blah blah, you know, just to let you know and so on and so forth. So there was a discussion among my brothers and they were going about um which is the cheapest option for disposal, you know. And somebody said um, cremation and everything. I said, A true Christian will never discuss cremation. Cremation is not Christian. Eh? Is let me be honest with you. One, it is pagan, okay, and it is demonic. But also cremation. Let me explain this, yeah, so you'd understand this. Yeah, cremation, okay, is highly unscriptural. Where there was a curse on people and a judgment, the bodies were burnt, and the final judgment is actually burning. Do you understand this? Yeah. So please, no, no, it's true. Eternal hell fire is a permanent cremation. So you can't, as a believer, okay, no matter how much it is in fashion, because many times Christians get carried away with the fashions of this world. Yeah. The biblical principle for the believer and the honoring of the dead, and because our Lord Jesus Christ showed us the principle was that how many of you have been baptized yeah christians will follow the principle of what can i can i have the um apostles creed okay it is burial are we together okay and then in the place of burial we lie in wait the body lies in wait for the resurrection of the body are we together Okay. People say, but what happens to Christians who X, Y, Z happens? God knows what he's doing. Do you know that even till today, even if somebody has been burnt in a plane and all sorts of things have happened and so on, they find the remains and still bury it. Yeah. Okay. There are, there are, there are soldiers who fought in the Korean War in Vietnam, who when they find any articles that belong to them because they were never found, they still bring it all the way home to America, put it in a coffin and still bury. Because burial is Christian. Are we together? Burial is also Jewish. All the Abrahamic faiths or religions, which is threefold, normally Islamic, what? 
Jewish, Judaism, and Christianity, okay, are built around the principle of burial. It was an honor to be buried in the grave. It was a dishonor for a body to be eaten by all sorts of wild animals. In fact, when they want to dishonor you, they will make sure you don't get a burial, or they will not bury the person properly, okay, or they cremated and burnt in order to dispose of, okay. So please, I'm just that on the side okay so if this conversation ever comes up anywhere okay you'll be able to say this is why we as christians do so burial is scriptural amen and biblical okay just just to move on okay so the body is what god gives to you to get the job done <clears throat> after you have gotten the job done the basis of your judgment will be what did you do with that body that was given to you so the body is simply a tool and a work clothing to get god's will done on earth as it is in where heaven amen everybody will give an account for what they did with the clothing that god gave to them And the question is, when you are standing before God, will you be ashamed of what you use the body to do? Or would you be glad and say, Lord, here I am. I am so happy that I was faithful <clears throat> with the body that you gave to me. Because the Bible says, a body you have given me to do what? Your will, O oh God. Every man will be rewarded or taxed with what he did with his body. Then the Bible tells us in several places, especially Matthew 25, that the Lord said to a group of people, Come into your master's what? Joy. Or what? Two, two words that were said. Pardon? I didn't hear you. No, the two words. Good and what? Good and faithful servants. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. What does the word good represent? Okay. Good is to do with quality. Okay. So you say this is sterling good. Okay, sterling good. Okay, you're talking about quality. Okay, the quality, the diligence, the, 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 the quality with which it was done. Okay, As is, and faithfulness represents what? Character, speaking about what? Consistency of goodness. Are we together? Okay, that you do something good today. Then... Tomorrow you don't do it good. You can no longer be classed as being what? Faithful. Okay? So it is the consistent quality of that goodness over time. So it says, oh good and what? Faithful servant. You are considered to be faithful when, hear this, what you did at the beginning is what you carried on to the end. Hebrews chapter 6. Are we together? Reading from verse 10 to 12. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 10 to 12. Let's read together. It says what? For God is not what? Unrighteous to forget, overlook your what? Labor and the love which you have shown for his namesake in ministering to the needs of the saints, his own consecrated people, as you still do. Okay, next verse. But we do strongly and earnestly desire for each of you to show the same what? Diligence and sincerity all the way through in realizing and enjoying the full assurance and development of your hope until the end. 
Next. In order that you may not grow, what is it? Disinterested and become spiritual, what? Sluggards. But rather imitators, behaving as do those who through faith, by the leaning of their entire personality on God, in Christ, in absolute trust and confidence, in his power, his wisdom and goodness, and by practice of patient endurance, are waiting, what? And waiting, and now what? Inheriting the promises. Yeah? Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me share with you one important truth. Yeah? Or let me ask a question. What is the connection between faith and hope? Hello. What is the, as 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 Christians, you should know. Okay. Okay, praise God. Some are deliberately not looking at me so that they think I'm going to ask them a question. Okay. So it's almost, from now on, come on, I'm sitting in front here. Praise God. Because you're the children's pastor. So come and sit here. I want to be watching so that I can face you. They'll be asking a question. So from now on, you'll be sitting beside Pastor T. Praise God. Everybody clap for her. Amen. That also means you cannot escape to the kitchen when... If I don't see you in front here, you're in trouble. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Yes. What's, what's the connection? Okay, let me give you a, a few clues. Okay? Come and sit beside Pastor T. Don't worry. We will not mistake you for his wife. I promise you that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Pastor T, she's not there. You're the one who is in trouble. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. It's true. Praise God. Amen. But she sat and he went. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So very soon you will went to. Amen. <laughs> oh, tomorrow is your laughing. You will still go and sit there. Praise God. <laughs> Her heart is beating like this as we are just talking. Amen. Okay, no worries. No worries. But, but hear this. Okay, hear this. Okay, let me let me give you a quick breakdown. Okay, faith is for now. Okay, all right, and hope is for tomorrow. The end. Okay, the Bible said now faith. Okay, all right. Faith is the currency with which you purchase hope at the end. Without faith. You cannot have hope. Hope is the reward that you anticipate at the end of your faith. Is this making sense? Okay. So that means that the only reason why you have hope. Watch this. So the only reason why you have faith today. It's because there is a hope of receiving the promise that lies at the end. So you have faith. You develop faith every day. But it is the hope of that which lies at the very end. That causes you to have faith for each day. But watch this. Hope is always anchored to a promise. That he who promised will fulfill what he has promised. And because of his faithfulness to deliver what he has promised, you have faith for each day to be able to receive what he has promised you at the end. Are we together? Okay? Now, let me say this. A person who is unemployed cannot have hope of a wage at the end of the month.
Does that make sense? It is a person who is employed in doing something, okay, that because your employer has promised you a wage at the end of the month, you have faith in doing that work every day. Trusting that at the end of it all, he will not deceive you like Laban. Are we together? So, you keep on working. Even though you have not yet seen the wage. But because you trust in his integrity. That he will pay you for this job. And because you have agreed that at the end of the month, he will give you a thousand or two thousand or ten thousand, whatever it is. So because of that, though you don't yet have that money, but every day for the next 28 days, you are working, working, working. Every day you go to work by faith, trusting that at the end, which is your hope of receiving that money, you will get it. Because you trust that he himself who promised you is what? Faithful and a person of integrity. Is this making sense? Wally, are you, have they deceived you? Because <laughs> you, you're shaking your head like... <laughs> okay, praise God. Okay, watch this. When you get to the end, what will you say to the Lord? Lord, I did this faithfully. So therefore, I now have hope that you, or my hope was always that you will reward me to my faithfulness. For my faithfulness. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. If a laborer's hope is that the master will pay him at the end of his job, what is the basis of your hope if you're not serving faithfully today? Hello? The Bible says, a laborer is what? Worthy of his wages. The Bible says that the hunger of the laborer, what? Drives him. For the joy that was what? Set what? Before him. He what? Endured the what? Cross. So it was the hope of sitting back at the right hand of the Father and all things being committed into his hands that caused him to labor and to what? Endure. And in the end, he received his reward. Let me ask you a question today. What will God reward you for? Where have you been faithful? Whose work are you faithfully carrying out? Or are you self-employed? Are you God-employed or are you self-employed? Shall I be honest with you? Only a fool expects to go and collect a wage where he has not labored. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 22, it says, I come swiftly and I come to reward each man and give him the wages for his labor. There are many people in Tesco when you get in there. Some are spending and some are what? Earning. Do you know that? Yeah. How many of us have a hope that Lord when I finish 
you will surely reward me. But the basis of hope is your labor. The basis of faith for each day is that I will surely receive what he has promised me. Now let me just go back a little bit now. Okay, watch this. The Bible says in Genesis, sorry, Acts chapter 6, okay, we learned last week about what the law of priority, okay, a very important principle about priority, okay, knowing how to put the right things first, amen. The apostles said, Bible, we learned about in every place where there's going to be work, where there's going to be the church of God, there will be challenges, there will be relational difficulties, that's a fact. How many of us remember? Okay, all right. If you were in your house group, it would have been even more emphasized, and that is why it is important for you to be in a lighthouse fellowship. Okay, in the house fellowship where there's one to one, Paul said in Acts 20 20, I taught you from house to house, okay, and um, from temple to temple, so to speak, in the temple and in the house. Yeah, every Christian is expected to be in a small group where you share and sh share your lives, share your fellowship. The, the early church until today has always been built on two fronts, on the home front and in the temple. It is impossible to effectively run the Christian race without being involved in a small house fellowship. Because the Christian life is not only lived on a Sunday, Sunday basis okay so i'm using that to encourage you make sure that you are actively involved in the home fellowship jesus christ spent more time in people's homes and houses than he actually spent in the temple the temple was a place for public gathering and it was not every day but every day in our homes, there were fellowships that were taking place. They met regularly, both in the temple and also in their homes. Okay, so please, I want to reiterate this and I want to encourage you. Make sure that you're actively involved. If you don't have one, find a nearby one to get involved. Go in there, share your life. The one another's of the scripture are actually fulfilled in the small group fellowships. Okay, when you were at university, it was very difficult to excel without being involved in small study groups. You know, thank God for the lectures, but those who actually did well were those who had small study groups where you would what strengthen one another, encourage one another, sharpen one another, so you can grow in your academics. Same thing also in terms of the Christian walk. It can only be achieved successfully in a corporate setting. Are we together? Okay, so we go back. So the Bible says, hear this, that there was a church as it grew, tensions arose. But now the Bible says that the solution was this. It says, find verse 3, Acts chapter 6 from verse 3. Therefore, select what? Let's read together. Let's read together, church. Therefore, select out from among yourselves, brethren, seven men of what? Good and what? Uh, again, again, I didn't hear that. Seven men of what? Good and what? Attested character and repute, full of the Holy Spirit and what? Wisdom, whom we may assign. To look after this business and duty. Hallelujah. And the next verse says what? Next verse. Next verse. But we will continue to devote ourselves steadfastly to prayer and the ministry of the word. So verse 5 says, And the suggestion pleased the whole assembly. And they selected Stephen, a man full of what? Faith, a strong and welcome believer, Jesus is the Messiah, and full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Next was who? Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, 
and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte convert from Antioch, and Chukawafo. Hello? Can't you see there? Did you see my name there? Let me look properly. The only, the only other name I can see is my name. T is there. <laughs> Uncle Morris, we're looking for your name. Yeah. I can see Stella. Can you see Stella? Eh? Yeah, a worry man. <laughs> Robo, why are you? That there's no. <laughs> I know you see Stella. <laughs> anyway, you need to eat when you get home. So if you say you didn't see her name, that is Wahala. Okay, no problem. But, but but watch this. Okay, it says that these people were mentioned. What was the criteria for selecting them? Go back again to verse what? Verse four or verse three? Okay, let's go back. So can you can you put? Okay, verse three. It says what? Good and what? That is there. You have tested it. Character. Okay, and they already have that means that they have what is called reference. A reference. This person has reference. You ask this person, you ask that person, ask this person, and the same reference is coming. This person is good and they have character. They are reliable, they're dependable, they're trustworthy. Whatever you are assigned to them, you can be guaranteed it gets done, done on time and they deliver whenever you require it of them. Get references. Attested. Shall I tell you what is interesting? What were these people's assignments supposed to be? Do you know what it was? To what? To do big breakfast. All they were required to do was to serve food at the table. And yet, such a standard was required. Don't, don't take it off the screen. Select from among yourselves, brethren, seven men of good. That is, a, this is whatever they do. You see the quality in what they do. They don't do a rukushanka. They just don't do it anyhow, anyhow. Good quality. When you do, I always tell Joshua, whatever you do, eh, let it be that when somebody sees it, they will say, ah, ah. Look, they will begin to bless God for whoever did this job. Don't be average. Let there be a mark that you will have a signature of excellence to everything you do. Let somebody bless God, bless you, bless your parents for what you do. They shouldn't be saying, oh my God, oh my God. Eh? Let us, so you have to come and do again what you had done. Quality. You don't do things anyhow. You do it with taking it what? Personal. A personal approach to doing those things. And it talks about attested character. And is that if people know if you need something done and you need that work to be done properly, 
And some of you can count on day or night. Come rain, come shine. Winter, summer, autumn, or what? Spring. You can count on this person. Let me tell you what is interesting. Yeah, I found that many times. Yeah, let me just use an example of the big breakfast. Okay, with the big breakfast out there, the people first of all they came because we were giving the. They came, we gave them a little, and they, they liked it. But guess what? After some time, and what has now caused them to begin to return in full force, is that our what faithfulness in doing this. Consistency. So that they can say, I'm good, I will see you next week. You know what I will see you next week means? It means we are certain that you will be there next week. So, when they're coming next week, they will go and bring a friend because they have learned these people are reliable. Now they come at a particular time, they're waiting, trusting that you said you will open at this time and at that time you open and you're there. You said the meal begins at 8.30 and at 8.30 they are ready to go and receive what is there. So it is no longer the food that is now driving but our consistency, our faithfulness, our reliability. Who knows anything about America Wonder? What, what is that about America Wonder? It's always a one day wonder. Yeah? You see today, by the time you blink, it's gone. Yeah. Let me go treasures consistency, reliability. Eh? Durability. That is, that is, that this person, you can count. You, ah, you see, it makes sense. We don't understand this thing. Somebody who you can go and ask any woman. Eh? The one thing that causes a woman to be able to have total confidence in a man is because he's reliable, he's dependable. You can count on him. Let me tell you, a gifted and an unreliable person will begin to cause you a lot of annoyance and bitterness and anger. That's the truth. Do you know what, listen, do you know what cars like Range Rover? Yeah? No, it's true. Huh? I'm just giving you, they will tell you yeah, that this car, I don't know whether it's true because I've never driven one, it will know some sort. Okay? They will tell you that there's some cars, Rolls Royce, the basis upon which they sell you and sell you that much money. They tell you, in fact, they steal the engine and they give you a warranty for life. Only Rolls Royce can touch it. A car company that gives you a life warranty and tells you if anything happens, bring it back. We're, we're certain nothing will happen, huh? but if anything happens, bring it. I will take care of it. The reason why Kia began to make it in the UK was they began to give a seven-year warranty to their cars. And people like warranty. It's true. Within seven years, if anything happens here, bring it. They're telling you, we can trust that in seven years you have peace of mind. Because where there is no faithfulness, there can never be peace of mind. It is one thing to commit an assignment to a gifted man, but if he's not faithful, 
if he's not of a tested character and is not reliable and dependable. While you give it, you also be there watching because he can drop it any time. I ask you, where will you be found faithful? What is it that God has committed to your hands that you have remained faithful to doing? Season in, season out. Come rain, come shine, snow or sun. Who will write a reference for you and say, we know him you can trust him. You can trust her. You know. And it's not to say that good and faithful people don't make mistakes. They do. Because they're not infallible. Then it says what? Full of the Holy Spirit and with what? Wisdom. To serve soup and bread. To serve ordinary. You see, ah, ah. but you see, the reason being this to do God's work, a man needs these things to be able to do God's work. Full of the Holy Spirit and with wisdom. To serve a table. Do you know what is interesting? They didn't say a person who knows John chapter 5 or who has been in church for 20 years or who is born again for 50 years or who is this and that. No, he did not ask for all those things. Good, attested character, solid re reference reputation that this person will not let you down. This person will not mess you up. This person is somebody who I can tell you if you if you give them this work to do, you can be sure it will be done well and to be done consistently. They are what? Faith. And that is why the Bible says, the first person that was mentioned was who? Who was it? Stephen. The Bible says full of faith. Full of faith also means faithful. He was a reliable man, dependable man. He knew God. He loved God. His heart was given to God. Let me explain why that is important. Yeah? The evidence that you know God, you cannot know a faithful God and you, you'll be an unfaithful and unreliable person. You cannot know the ancient of days, the rock of ages, and you, you are unreliable and unstable. The Bible says that a man who is unstable, okay, there's a character in the Bible Okay, Joseph, not Joseph, Jacob's first son, Reuben, said, Because you are unreliable like boiling water, he says, You can never excel. Though you are the first of my sons, though you are the preeminence of my strength, yet because you are unstable like boiling water, he says, You'll never excel. And he lost. What God gave him by birthright. Church of God. Listen. Uh, God is looking for faithful men. Men and women with character. Men and women who are reliable. Many of you as parents. When you are, your children are going to get married. They may be very young today. But when you're looking. When you're hoping that they will find. Your children will find the right person to marry. Listen. Wisdom will tell you, especially after some bitter experiences, make sure you find a faithful, a reliable. You see, you say, does he have a car? Eh, does he have whatever? What's his haircut like? How many of you will be asking for that? No. Is it lenge, lenge, uh, sepe, Is it all those? Those things will not matter anymore. Many of you want to go and find out about the parents, the family they're coming from. Are they reliable? Are they dependable? Are they trustworthy people? Are they people of faith? Are they people who have shown long-term commitment to things? Should I say what is interesting? For those of us who may be here, if you're doing your reference and you show that you change jobs every six months, 
or every year. Listen, when it arrives at certain desks, that will disqualify you. You know why? Because employers are attracted to people who have held a job down for 10. Long time. This person. But if you show, I have lots of experience. Every six months I change jobs. They will just tell you, thank you very much. You know what? They just move your CV aside. Because this person cannot be trusted. They're not reliable. You know? Even men are looking for faithful men. How much more? God. Are you a faithful man? Are you a faithful woman? Are you depend Can God entrust things to you? And know that when he comes back, you would have... Good means I multiplied it. But secondly is this. You know what? I'm here to give an account. You are somebody who the quality of what you do and the durability of who you are is consistent. The sad part of it is this. We're often attracted to very gifted people and, and so on and so forth. I said to JJ, let me tell you, you may be gifted, but my assignment in your life is not so much for your gift, but for your character. Because your character that will take you into the presence of God. Listen, your gift may put you in the presence of men, but it's your character that will put you in the presence of God. Church of God, God is looking for men, women who are good. Amen. God is looking for men and women who have a tested character of solid repute. Hallelujah. Men and women who are full of the Holy Ghost and have wisdom. Let me tell you what wisdom is. Wisdom is the ability to hear God and do what God says. That is it in short. Because it is a fool that cannot hear and will not do. A hearing heart. An understanding mind. And a willing spirit to do what God has said. That is wisdom. Ask Solomon. That's what he asked for. I pray that God will cause this house that when God looks down and when God is looking for people, he will say, Sharon, Bami, Oko, Tokbe, that God will just be calling and so on. Like that. T, these are my good and my faithful servants. In the end, he will say, come into it, the joy of your master. Are you the one God is looking for? Are you the one that God will select? Out of thousands, seven were picked. Will your name be on that list of the good and faithful? Let us rise up before God. Hallelujah. You have been listening to a message recorded from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, International Christian Center, Chadwa Eve. If you need copies of this message, please call the church office on 0208-859-00789 or 0208-59-77111 or email us at media at icc-rccg.org. Please find further details about this ministry at www.icc-rccg.org God bless.